racial disparities, uh, addressing the achievement gap. Uh, you've discussed this in preparation for a special session uh, over the past month and a half. Uh, you know, some say it's too sensitive to address the real problems of uh, racial disparities. Uh, I personally think it's the biggest problem we have facing our state of Minnesota in the future. Um, to the both of you, what, uh, what, what approach would the both of you have, or uh, let's start with Speaker Doubt. Speaker Doubt, what, what approach might you have to address the issue of racial disparities? You know, I would agree with you, Steve. I think it is one of the biggest problems facing our state, and, and frankly, you know, I want all Minnesotans to be able to make more money and have the opportunity to make more money, and, and frankly, uh, there is a direct connection between our, our low statistics on, on income equality for, for uh, folks in this community. There's a direct connection between that and the fact that we have the highest achievement gap in the country. Um, and what that means is uh, that, that our low income and minority students aren't getting the same education. And the gap between them is the highest in the country. And, and just like uh, I believe that's un-Minnesotan, I believe it's un-Minnesotan that we have this high disparity in, in, in wages just because of, not just because of race, but it's, it's, it's uh, magnifying itself there. Um, and, and we can't solve one problem without addressing the other. The fact that these kids are, are you know, less than a 50% graduation rate in, in, in a lot of cases in the Minneapolis school district um, is just, it's, it's, it's not only un-Minnesotan, it's shameful. I think that we all think that we, we have a great education system, and I, I, you know, I have the honor of serving in the legislature with one of my high school teachers, Representative Sandra Erickson, and, and you know, I, I think highly of the, the public education that I received, uh, but if that's not working, we need to do whatever we can to make sure we get these kids the best education we can give them so that they can graduate and, and they're equipped for being successful uh, in, a, in, their, in their careers in the future. And, and the fact that, that they're, we have this great wage disparity is absolutely directly connected to the fact that we're not equipping these kids and giving them the opportunity to be successful. So I have very strongly, I know we talked earlier about the, the money for early education. Uh, what we ended up doing last session actually was, was my position, which was let's invest in early education scholarships because the data actually shows that that will reduce the achievement gap and has a much higher percentage of reducing the achievement gap um, than, a, than another investment. Why should we be spending money uh, putting preschool kids in Edina uh, or kids into preschool in Edina uh, when their parents are already paying for it and they're not asking for it. Uh, and and the, the kids in, in North Minneapolis are going into a program that has a less success rate than what we could be doing for them. Let's target our dollars at, at making sure that we get those kids uh, into a program that will work for them. Um, it shouldn't be just rich kids that have the choice to go to a private school if they want to. Um, and I think that's on Minnesotan. Leader Bach? Well, we, we didn't get here overnight. Uh, this has been a problem that has been festering for a long, long time. And we, those parents can already enroll their kids in any one of 350 school districts in the state. Who knows how many buildings that is. We can thank Rudy Perpich for that. This was the first state in the country that they created open enrollment so a parent could take their kid and you want to put them in Edina, go put them in Edina. You want to put them in St. Louis County Rural Schools, move to the range. Uh, uh, we could use more kids in our schools. <laughs> uh, some jobs up there, though. But, uh, you know, the, the working group that, that uh, the, the speaker and I put together have taken some really, really powerful testimony. I think first, uh, first is understanding the problem and what's creating it. And I don't think we know. The, the, it's a multifaceted problem. And uh, I did talk with the speaker and the governor recently about maybe in this special session on this issue with economic disparities, we ought to create some kind of a task force that is uh, given a mission and is mandated to come back to the legislature uh, and try to identify this problem for us. The, the opportunity to get it done at the, in the busyness of a legislative session when, when every lawmaker is juggling uh, a number of issues in any given time there just isn't the time to focus on that. Uh, so more research has to be done as to first, I think, identifying why we have the problem. And I think educational opportunities is certainly a piece of it. But uh, I, I'm pretty committed to try to get our arms around it and see if we can make some 
progress on it. We didn't we didn't get to her overnight, and we're not going to fix this overnight either. And uh, part of the problem with trying to deal focus just on education is it doesn't do anything for the whole cohort of people that are already adults uh, that are already badly either unemployed or underemployed. So it, it needs to be more than just an educational strategy.